Uh, sorry for being a bit late. There are some unexpected uh, changes here. Um, the f I will first of all welcome everybody to this session in the Humawaka uh, session room. Um, we are uh, going to have a session with a couple of web mapping uh, topics today. Uh, the first man out will be Oliver Guyot. Um, and uh, he has uh, sent us a pre-recorded video um, that I'm going to play now. And then uh, there will be time for questions about it afterwards. So here's, here's the video. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this presentation. We're going to talk about ink map and about printing maps. So, my name is Olivier Guyot and I'm a developer at camp to camp This presentation was also prepared by my colleague Tobias Kor, who is also a developer at camp to camp Printing maps is not that simple. Let's see why. So, let's talk about a common scenario that you probably have encountered um, you have a web application with an interactive map in it and it's great because it's very easy to navigate inside your map. You can zoom in, zoom out, you can pan and you can also change what's inside the map and how data, data looks inside it. And maybe after a while you'll be happy with how the map looks like and you'll think, well, I'd like to have this map on paper. This is called printing, of course. So, um, things can be m harder than expected when printing a map. There is uh, first the issue of scale. When you are on an interactive map in your browser, you sometimes have a scale indication, but you often have measure tools. And this allows you to measure distances pretty precisely, right? Uh, on the paper map, you don't have these, so you need a very precise and accurate scale indication. And also, on the same topic, using web Mercator projection, which is very common in web maps, isn't a good fit for paper maps, because you may have uh, pretty strong distortions from one part of your map to the other. Also, uh, printed maps need to have more dots than the maps on the computer screen so it means um, for on, on the same zoom level you need to have more detail on the paper maps and this means that you need more data and more data means that you need more time to download it um, there is also something called the dpi that you probably have seen or i've heard of because it shows up every time you want to print something anything even text or any images so DPI means a dot per inch. It's just a measure of how many dots you have in one inch, all right? So a high DPI means you have a higher dot density. This is simple, but actually the problem is that computer screens have a, they have a DPI as well, right? Because their dots are pixels, but we don't know their density. And also we know that when we print something, anything we want to have at least 150 dpi and 300, and DPI, uh, 300 dpi is a good value for a quality print also some devices have double dpis for example mobile devices with retina screens and when we print something we want to maintain the scale so the scale on the screen has to be pretty much the same as the scale on the paper map and this introduces uh, kind of complex computations which can be which can give you a headache and you know that's okay don't be afraid because there are solutions for this of course um, they, here I've listed three uh, back-end solutions that have been around for a long time the first is Mapfish Print and you probably have heard of it it's it's pretty common so it's a print server in Java and it's open source and it has a very powerful uh, PDF layout engine. So you basically 
prepare uh, templates with Jasper reports and then Mapfish Print will use them to actually print uh, the map but it will also print the legend of the map and uh, uh, it can also do attribute tables and it can also handle large asynchronous jobs by sending an email when it's done for example so it's very powerful it has some limitations for example it won't print vector ties i think it won't I i'm pretty sure it won't and qgis also has of course a strong pdf output and reports functionalities so these are available in qgis server so it means that you can make qgis a powerful print service uh, because you have access to all these features through to the web and you can do atlas multi-page layout so it's very uh, rich uh, but it needs a qgs file to work on right this is qgs so it needs a project to work on and the last is the arcgis printing services so in the arcgis suite you have pretty uh, powerful printing services and what's interesting is also that you have a client-side connector in javascript so it's made to you know to make your life easy it supports custom layouts and uh, it also has limited rendering capabilities and it's not open source of course okay so you may think i don't have a server all right and that's fine i don't have a server either and maybe that's a good thing because servers can be expensive over time especially if you want a centralized printing service it can become expensive because you have a lot of uh, uh, requests with a lot of data to store and you also have a lot of processing power required to do all this stuff also when you think of it a browser at least a modern browser can do anything you need to print a map it has many rendering possibilities there are uh, several map rendering libraries it can assemble pdf documents this is doable there are several libraries for that a browser of course is capable of handling asynchronous jobs uh, because it does all the time and you can load large amount of data in the browser there are no real limit the only limit is how much data you're willing to download and how much time you have so there are already some client-side printing tools around uh, i've found a few and there are probably more that i haven't found um, most of these have limitations and here i've listed the three more common limitations the first one is the tools that rely on just making um, a snapshot of the map and transforming it into an image and then you can print the image and this is very limited because for example uh, so the dpi of your image will be too low that's for sure because the map on the screen is usually around 70 or 90 dpi um, also, you may, you may have problems with aspects because your map on the screen may not have the aspect that you want on your printed document. So this is a very simple approach. It's, it's pretty cheap, but it's very limited. And I think it's not a good fit for what we want to do. There are, there are tools that work with a map box as well. So uh, I found a few and they're very powerful and they they allow you to make very detailed maps so that's great the only issue is that mapbox will only work with web mercator and as i said earlier this is a strong limitation as well a third problem that i've seen is that many uh, printing tools or libraries are actually tied to a specific library and here is an example that i think is a good example um, this is from a leaflet print plugin from GitHub user Aratcliff. And uh, so you can see here that if you want to enable printing on your application, so you need to define a provider, and then you need to, you need to define a control that use this provider, and then you need to add the control to your leaflet map. And obviously this is not gonna work if you're not using leaflets. So these are some of the reasons why InkMap is born so inkmap what is inkmap it's a javascript library okay and its goal is to print detailed maps at scale so 
you know, uh, ger generating maps that will look good on paper. Ink map is built to work in the background, in the background process, and to give you progress report. So it really embraces the asynchronous aspect of the whole topic by, you know, its approach is, you know, maybe a print job will take a long time, so that's okay. I'm going to take the time in the background. I'm going to give you progress reports. You can cancel the job. You can start another job. That's fine. Ink map also only requires as input a JSON document. So it's specification for what you want in your map. And it's pretty simple. You have to give it the layers, the center and scale of the map, the size of the final image, and the DPI, of course. So you can see here, this is an example of a JSON document that you can give to InkMap, right? So you see here, layers have a type. It can be XYZ for ties, for example. It can be WMS, WMTS. There is a size which uh, is specified in real world units. So it's millimeters in this case. Center is longitude and latitude. The DPI, of course, the scale. You can have a scale bar. You can have custom projections north a row and attributions it's very straightforward so ink map internally uses open layers for rendering the layers right and this is important because this is very um, a technical consideration but it's worth mentioning because open layers has many many capabilities for rendering stuff Right? It can handle custom projections without issue. It can reproject uh, ties. It, so you can mix layers with different uh, native projections and that's going to work out. Um, you also have decluttering. Open layers will do decluttering on vector data. It has many advanced styling possibilities. It will do map box vector ties, no problem. And also map box ties. You can tra tra uh, transform them to open layer styles, and that's going to work. And also, since the 6.7 release, it can actually do GeoTIFF and Cloud Optimize GeoTIFF, and that's awesome. So, of course, all these uh, items in the list are not available in InkMap right now. Not all of them, because they haven't been implemented yet in InkMap, but they're possible because the engine the rendering engine that InkMap relies on support this so it's just a matter of writing an api to use them um, InkMap is also made to work with any framework and any mapping library and this is really some this is really something that i want to emphasize you should not think that because your application uses Mapbox, for example, then you won't be able to use InkMap. That's not true. You InkMap doesn't care, right? It's self-contained. So you can be in any framework, any context, even maybe other things as, as JavaScript, or maybe theoretically, this could even work in Node, for example, in the backend. Um, that's theoretical, right? But, you know, the context doesn't matter. InkMap is self-contained. It just wants JSON documents, and then it will give you an image. And also, uh, it's worth mentioning that it relies, it relies on off-screen Canvas API. So it's an API that allows rendering stuff uh, on a, a separate thread. It means it will not impact the experience of the user and, and the, the experience of the browser. Um, this is not supported in Firefox, but there is a fallback, so it should be pretty seamless. So InkMap has limitations, and what are these? Um, there is a first limitation: is that InkMap will not output a PDF file for you. Right? Its job is to output an image, and it will give you a PNG image, um, you know, according to what you asked it for. Um, to make a PDF document, you need to use the PDF libraries, and this is really on purpose because. Uh, doing all the layout of a PDF document is a completely different topic. It's a, it's also complex, but it's a different, uh, really different topic. And we felt that it was really out of scope for InkMap. Besides, you, you're free to use whatever library you want to do PDF. There are several already. And, uh, you know, they're not that hard to use. They're very well documented. So it's really uh, something that we let 
the, the user uh, decide. Also, Inkmap will not output maps with um, vector data in it. So, for example, PDF with separate objects for each feature or SVG, because that would be too hard uh, with the current rendering engine that would need a completely different rendering engine. And, um, you know, since these maps are supposed to be printed at some point on paper, um, you know, I don't think it's uh, relevant to have like a separate object in your PDF file, for example. The only thing that you really want is a crisp aspect of your features once on the paper. And this you can have with a high DPI value. value. Another thing that Inkmap doesn't do is printing legends. This is not done currently, but maybe you know, we're considering it and maybe at some point we'll do it if we consider that it brings value to the library. A, a fourth item is attribute tables and atlas. So this is a pretty advanced functionality. Maybe in the long run we'll do it if there is interest and uh, funding for it. For now, it's, it's really out of scope. Okay, a quick um, a quick uh, talk about course, because course is something that you may have heard of, probably actually, and probably also you heard, it, you heard about it because it caused you trouble. So course is short for cross-origin resource sharing. It's a big set of rules, it's pretty complex, but the gist of it is if you're fetching data from another domain, then the data needs to come with course headers in it. Otherwise, your browser will block it and you won't be able to, to use it and to print it. So there is really no way around that. You need these headers because otherwise your browser will block it. We all know people or projects where there were like proxies that were made to fool this system and add headers along the way. But this is not, this is, I don't think this is a good idea. The course rules are there to protect you. They're here for your own good. Your browser wants your own good. So you should instead, if you want to use data from another domain and the data doesn't come with course headers, you need to contact the people there and ask, ask them to do their work, you know, and add the headers. Otherwise, there's no, there's no point in publishing data anyway, right? Okay, so let's close this topic for now. Uh, a quick look at how Inkmap works behind the scene. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, right? So I just want to show that Inkmap works with two parallel threads. So the main thread will receive the print request and will transmit them to the printer thread. And the printer thread will really do all the work and it will generate the layers, um, uh, fetch the data. When all the layers are, have been rendered, it will uh, assemble the layers bit together and once it's done, it will send back the final image to the main thread. And all the big work and the printing work is done in a service worker. Okay, so who made this possible? Inkmap was 100% funded by the French Ministry of Ecology. You can see their logo here, it's big. Um, they wanted this because they wanted to um, they wanted this as part of their Descartes mapping framework, which is a mapping, a very feature-rich mapping framework. It's open source, you can find it at the URL below. So Descartes has had a printing module for a long time, but no, they wanted to uh, rewrite it from scratch because it was too limited. And they went uh, with a client-side, a fully client-side solution. And that's because they wanted to give a lot of flexibility to the user when defining the layout of the, of the printed document. So you'll see afterwards, there is a demo, um, a quick demo of how it works in an application. This is an application that uses the Descartes framework, right? So here I've opened the print preview. I changed the layout to a portrait aspect. You can see on the on the preview the different elements that going that are going to be printed in the in the document, and you can see what I'm doing now is I'm uh, panning and zooming in the map to select the extent that I want to print. Once I'm happy with the extent, I can actually move the elements around. I can actually choose whether elements will be shown or not. I'm going to move the QR code to to be uh, at the top part of the document. I'm going to move the legend a bit. 
And when I'm happy, I'm just going to click on Generate, so Print. Okay, this is the final result that I got after this demo. So you see here, it's a screenshot of the PDF document, right? So you see the title, you see the QR code exactly like I wanted it to be. And you see the map and the map, it's the extent that I selected uh, during uh, uh, in the application during the previous video. But you can see that the map is much more detailed. There are much more data because the DPI is high and there is a legion as well. So this is all a very, uh, these are all features that are part of D Descartes, right? Inkmap was only responsible for producing the image that you see. And here there are some examples that you can uh, you can try there from the demo app, the, the demo page of Inkmap. I'm going to sh give you the link afterwards, but I'm just going to skip on this because it's going to be too long otherwise. These are Volcano, uh, Volcano area in France. This is the surface of Mars, right? Pretty cool, the landing area of Mars 2020. And this is um, historical pictures of uh, a, a town in Southwest France and WMTS uh, service. Okay, so where to get it? Uh, you can find the source at uh, camp 2 camp slash inkmap on GitHub. It's open source, of course, it's a Cecil C license. Uh, there is a demo page, which uh, you find the URL here, and there's the NPM package, which you can use right away. It's at camp 2 camp slash inkmap. Okay, I'm done. Thank you so much for following these presentations. I hope you had a good time. I wish you have a very, a very good phosphorgy. Have fun. See you later.